right, everybody, to another week of that movie show. Mike went and Eddie McCabe here taking you through another week of movie talk. Eddie, how you doing today? Oh, I'm doing peachy keen jelly bean. Are you now? I mean, I, what else am I going to say? The world's falling apart. Look, here. Here, this week, we have an upside, right? We've been, you know, on pace this year to have a major historical event every Wednesday. This past Wednesday, we didn't. Wow, nothing happened on Wednesday, huh? No, nothing happened on Wednesday. Hmm. Well, the closest thing we got was, like, Canada denounced Proud Boys. Uh, okay, I guess that's a positive. <laughs> you know what I mean? I think that, that, was, that was about it, you and know? I, 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 I think we're still checking off denouncing white supremacists as uh, as a negative I, as, that's a good thing right yeah, yeah we uh, denounced okay. white supremacists um you know well maybe <laughs> unless, i technically it happened on thursday uh there was that wackadoo congresswoman that like believed in jewish space lasers like setting off fires in california um, yeah i saw the senate live I, I didn't see her actual thing oh god Ugh. also They're terrible like, senate live this week it was a real letdown oh yeah yes yeah. Uh, I mean, there was hope for it, you know. I, mean, I always have. You have hope. I mean, what the fuck? We got nothing else to do but watch TV lately. So you got yeah. hope for everything being good. And, right. And the, the opening, uh, the opening, the cold open was actually pretty funny. It was um, Kate McKinnon doing uh, what's what's still working. Okay. And obviously, nothing's working anymore. Yeah. Uh, sure. You know, you know, politics and blah blah blah. And then they they finally one was John Krasinski playing uh, uh, Tom Brady. Because he's going oh. to the Super Bowl, yeah. and, and they go through the thing, and she's almost got to the end of it, and she's like, "So you're working?" He's like, "Yeah, yeah, everything seems. I'm, I'm playing football. I'm winning. I, I'm going to the Super Bowl." She's like, so, "Okay, so I think I think you're working. So you're not like some crazy Trump guy, right?" He's like, "All right, good, good talk." <laughs> <laughs> like, All right, that that that's 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 pretty funny. But the rest of the episode is kind of a letdown. It's so funny because like, and this tied us into that movie show, so we can talk about it. Sure. Um, so the SAG after committee came out and they were going to have a disciplinary hearing or something to revoke his SAG card. Ooh, and John Krasinski? S- no, Donald Trump. <laughs> and and Why? Do not, like you have to you have to read the letter because it turned into one of those situations of like you can't fire me, I quit. And it's just like we already fired you. What are you what are you talking about? And he sends this letter being like I stand by my work and he like starts listing off his cinematic achievements of home alone Two, where he played himself yep. Zoolander where he played himself yep. wall street money never sleeps where he played himself right, or his biggest thing, the apprentice. <laughs> And like, he just like went on this tirade. You got to read it. Cause it's, it's comical. Like you would think that it was a letter to, for the onion. Like, <laughs> like that's what you would think that it was just like, I can't believe that the former president is so grumpy at the screen actors killed, which like, look, here's the thing as a card carrier member of the union, right. um, like, Hey guys, you know what would be kind of good if like we didn't have to pay dues this year, you know, because none of us are working, right. you know what I mean? Like none of us are actually working. So like, how about you put all of our dues on hold for the year and don't charge me 270 bucks every quarter, you assholes. Or hey, how about those of us that became eligible during COVID does gets a fee waived or two? <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. You know $3,000? I mean? No, I'm good. I'm good. Yeah, I'll stay oh. non-union for the time being. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, well, here's the thing. Especially, I'm sorry. Boston. Am I going to get more work all of a sudden for your three thousand dollars? No, I'm good. I'm good. Yeah, no, especially in Boston, if you hold out as long as you can, because then you put yourself into a box. Like that's yeah. that's the worst. Well, that, thing. That's kind of what they said. It, it, if I if I take another role like the one I had back in September, I'll have to join basically. Yeah. So that's you know here's the thing, and this is pure luck, I guess. But I was a must join within six months of starting acting sure. because the first commercial I hit was technically two national lucky charms commercials. Right. And then I hit another one like, you know, six months later and it was just like, Oh no, you need to join now. And it's just like, Oh, and now it totally screws me over because there's a ton of stuff. You you follow like Boston casting and there's like a ton of non-union stuff and sure. ton of that, that I'd like fall into but because, like, you know, 
Cambridge Savings Bank isn't pulling out the dollars for a SAG commercial. Right. You know what I mean? And then every single time, and this has happened to me on at least five occasions where I have gone in, auditioned for a movie or television show. They've told me that I've basically got the job. It's called like right of first refusal. So like they basically put me on hold for the job. Then they go, oh, they're just going to have like the producer's like brother do it. And it's just like, are you for real? <laughs> like, are you for fucking real? And it's like, look, I'm not going to tell you that I had like a starring role in, you know, a Kevin Smith movie. Right. But it's just like, yeah. I know that anybody could play that fucking bartender. Like, you know what I mean? But I could play. I got you were going to have me play the bartender, you monster. And then you have some asshole come in from New York. So, like, you know, unless I decide to move to New York or L.A. where that's going to, like, actually matter for stuff. Right. And, like, right. then there's no point. I mean, I guess my thing would be uh, I just I haven't been working a lot, obviously. Yeah. And I mean, this this might surprise you, but the TV show I've been doing for the last seven years wasn't Union. So, oh, yeah. <laughs> Shocker. <laughs> Here's the thing I worked on that, some bitch. <laughs> like, yeah, no. But, but I, I could write the same letter that Donald Trump. Nobody played Mike Went better than Mike Went for the last seven years. <laughs> no, that's the funniest thing. <laughs> that was the funniest part about it is that he lists off his credits. Like, like that's where it goes from being I like. I became. Like. <laughs> like I the understand, role. I understand like why you'd be mad. You know what, what I mean? And it's and it's just like, look, here's the thing: should the Screen Actors Guild pull Donald Trump's acting card? No, no, no they shouldn't because you don't have a horse in this race. You don't have a dog in this fight. Nothing like he's not now going to like start an acting career. You know what I mean? Like, look, here's the thing. Duh, well. Would it surprise you? <laughs> it wouldn't surprise me. But at the same time, at the same time, it's just like, yeah, this guy's not all of a sudden going to just now be like in movies. Like, yeah, he might have started The Apprentice again. Right. But like, that's a very different conversation than like, yeah, if this was, you know, President Jonathan Taylor Thomas and now Jonathan Taylor Thomas decided he wanted to get back into acting. You know what I mean? It's not like that. You know, all of his movie roles are literally like, hey, look, that's Donald Trump. That's literally that's literally yeah. all of his movie roles. Yeah. Yeah. Um, which also him listing The Apprentice in yeah. a letter to SAG. Do you need SAG for reality TV? So for most part, no. But where he was the like the face of it. Yeah. You know, like maybe I don't know. Solid. Maybe. You know, it it falls under AFTRA, right? Like I that guess, falls yeah, that, that falls sense, under yeah. the AFTRA side of things, where it's like you're you're on television on a network show. Yeah, you yeah, know, I, I guess that does make sense because it's when, not when break it down. Yeah, because it's not like Jersey Shore where we rounded up five assholes, stuck them in a house. You know what I mean? Like that's not the same. <laughs> Three Survivor, years later, they're holding out like fucking friends for a million dollars each. Yeah. <laughs> You know, and uh, they what's gave it to him. <laughs> Survivor, uh, what's his name? The host. Probably what? Yeah, he was. He was him. probably, but like, yeah, I don't need these starving, you know, assholes on a beach to be sag after. Us. Although, I mean, I guess it wouldn't surprise me if they told them that they were. You know, yeah. like so, some of them probably do. It's like, okay, well, you're going to be cast in the show and blah, 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 but you're going to have to sign up for SAG and blah, blah, blah. Like, I guess not, yeah. now that I'm kind of more thinking about it, that does kind of make sense. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's nationally because it's national television. The, yeah. Stuff. Despite what they're doing, they, they have a prominent speaking role on a nationally televised show. Yeah. Right. Doesn't matter what garbage is coming out of their mouth. You know, yeah, <laughs> it's, right. it's still a speaking role. Yeah. So, uh, I don't know. How, how did we get there? Um, we were talking about uh, nonsense that was happening in the world, and then oh, I pivoted right. with the SAG conversation to bring it more back to movies because this Appreciate isn't that it. politics show. Appreciate it's that, that movie show. I shoot myself. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. Although, although you know, I think we would have fun ha just roasting political theater. 
So look, here's the thing. Tweet at me, at the Eddie McCabe, if you want that politics show. Because if you just want to hear two assholes that don't really understand what's going on, rant about something for an hour. Uninformed political talk show. <laughs> I like it. That's the only type of political talk I'm going to get behind, yeah, is if look. I don't have to do any yeah. research on it show me the headlines and i'll give you 10 minutes on each one <laughs> right you know what i mean like that's the thing is like my uh, my understanding of what's going on is like i'm watching stephen colbert <laughs> on the late show not even doing that much you know, i'm bro? scrolling instagram <laughs> oh, i find seth myers to be delightful and that's about it i use his right gif all the time yeah because oh does. he's He's fantastic. Christopher I Titus. Do, I, don't, I, don't, I don't do the late night shows. I really don't like the, the uh, I got, I got so like, I don't know. They all just became the same fucking thing after a while. And well, I hate Jimmy problem. Fallon. So uh, like, I think that really pissed me off more than anything. Yeah, else. So that's the problem is, is that they're also cookie cutter now because like people want to hate on James Corden, but like in the beginning, James Corden was very unapologetically James Corden. And so it was like a lot of musical theater based. It was a lot more, I guess the word I'm looking for is whimsical. Sure. (laughs) But, but, and so it's just like, it was, it felt different. And so, but then I don't know whether ratings were involved or something, but they're like, Hey, British man, you need to weigh in on American politics. Cause that's what everybody else is doing. And now I see what you mean. And now that's all he is. You know what I mean? He's just cookie cutter there. And Um, really, it doesn't matter. Like, are people really going to James Corden for informative political opinions? No, I'm there for carpool karaoke. That's why I'm there. You know what I mean? The thing is the answer is probably yes. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, there's that too. Knowing knowing how we're running things lately, uh, the answer is probably fucking yes. You know, but then Colbert, the problem with him is, is that while it shouldn't have been the Colbert rapport, like beat for beat, there that should have been more of an infusion into it than just like generic late night show with this funny guy, you know? And then same thing with uh, Jimmy Fallon, Jimmy Fallon. I think that he does fun bits, but I don't watch the show and I know you don't like him, but don't like him, but it's just like, it's, he's a, he's perfect for the YouTube social media generation because it's like, Oh, I'm going to watch him and Justin Timberlake do the history of rap. I'm going to watch this bit. I'm not going to sit down at 1130 or whatever that show was on and watch the tonight show. Like that's, I, I think, and, and trying to remove my, my dislike for him, uh, and just talk about the show. I think one of the problems with it is like everything he does, I've seen him do on Saturday Night live. Yeah. It's yeah. like, and, and, I don't know. Maybe it's because I'm fucking old, but but I liked the old late night talk shows. Like I still will go into the the 900 channels and watch the Carson Tonight yeah. shows, and it's like they're great because half the people are drunk as shit, and he's yeah. not putting up with any of their garbage. Yeah, the it's best like, talk like show. It was like, or, or Letterman before he finished up uh, was great because again, I, I think what what turns me off about like the the Jimmy Fallon types of of late night talk shows is the unapologetic ass kissing of oh, everyone. Yeah. Not just like a certain amount of people. Every single person, he's on his knees before they even hit the, the couch. Yeah. It's like, come on, dude. And that was like, like I remember like, like the, one of the most famous uh, Letterman things was when Joaquin Phoenix came on and, and just kind of tried to sandbag the show, and Letterman wasn't having any of it. Oh, he's yeah. basically calling him an asshole on TV, and he's the guest. You yeah. know what I mean? The that would never happen. Late night- never happened. Yeah. The best late night talk show was Craig Ferguson. That was by far the best one, followed closely by Conan. When Conan, I didn't like Conan either. I didn't really like Conan either, but I appreciated that it, the, both of those shows were so different. I loved Craig Ferguson. I love Craig Ferguson. Right. And so, like, his anti late show, late show was hilarious, and I loved right. it. Um, but if you're looking for quality interview celebrity shows, the two that I immediately go to are hot ones and um, comics and cars getting coffee. Yeah. Like th- those are the two because they're both in a 
relaxed, disarmed position because right. like if it's hot ones, for those of you who have no idea what I'm talking about, go on YouTube, look up first. We feast, look up hot ones. It is a guy that sits in a black room with a celebrity and they just eat increasingly hot chicken wings. They're I've on subs- Hulu as well. They're on Hulu. They have an yeah. actual TV show. They show it on vice, I think, or TBS, one of the two. Sure. Um, but it's fantastic because you have these A-list celebrities that are coming on and like Scarlett Johansson was on one and her face is just on fire because mm-hmm. she's eating the world's hottest chicken wings. And then they he asks very interesting, thought-provoking questions. And then because they can't process it through the like PR filter... It's yep. just like, oh, yeah, I really just like we played volleyball on the beach with bears. It was like and it's just like, what? <laughs> you know what I mean? And it's just like because that filter is just gone. And right. it's just like, that's fantastic. And then Comics and Cars Getting Coffee is Jerry Seinfeld. And he basically goes to get coffee with a comedian. But they're both comedians and they're just in a car by themselves. And it's just a very candid conversation. See, I, I like that, and I like that style um, for – I like it because the – because they're peers, everyone in the situation is more relaxed. Right. So so it's it's just two peers shooting the shit. Um, there, was, there was one – I don't know if I mentioned it here last week or if we talked off air or whatever it was, but um, on Robert Rodriguez's old El Rey channel – yeah. The, the director's chair. Did I talk yes. about that last week? Yeah, okay. we talked about that last week. So, and, and I think I brought up the Quentin Tarantino one. It was a two-parter, and the two of them just sitting there bullshitting about movies, and the two peers, and obviously friends, just talking about movies. But he did more than just Quentin. He did, you know, a bunch of directors. And what I found, actually, just the other day is uh, on Variety's YouTube channel. They do something similar where they have actors talk, one actor talking to another yeah. actor, and they basically, quote-unquote, interview each other. Um but it's more just two peers shooting the shit. Right. And the one I found the other day was uh, Ben Affleck and Sasha Baron Cohen. And cool. the whole thing was, and of course they're all doing them now th- through zoom, which makes it even easier to get these guys together because it doesn't right. matter that one can be in the other side of the world. And what, what I took away from it was first of all, Ben Affleck is a massive Borat fan and, okay. and, and that's all he wanted to do. He just wanted to talk about the intricacies of Borat and how he made it because the second one had obviously just come out and he had just watched it. So it was a lot about that. It was all about how he does it and the, um, the discipline of Sasha's acting as Borat because yeah. he has to, it's almost like he has to stay, he, not almost, he has to stay in character 24 seven. And in certain situations, like in the sequel, which they talk about in this video, um, he there was a scene where uh, during COVID, Borat lives with these guys in their cabin, and they're okay, like they're, yeah. they're obviously like you know uh, you know the Southern Trump supporting types because that's where yeah. the funny is, and he was explaining he's like what I had to do was literally live with them for five days as Borat, and he goes after. He goes, I went into my bedroom at the end of the first night and had a full blown panic attack because I'm sitting there in my with my mustache and uh, in character and all this shit. And he's like, and I and there was no camera crew because they right. just put, they just placed cameras around the place. There was no producers. There was no cameraman. It was just Sasha Barakorn as Bo- Borat and these three or four guys for five full days and he couldn't break character. And he's like, at a certain point, they're going to catch me. And he just had a full blown panic attack because they're right. already the, the, the people that he's, you know, the marks for lack of a better term that he's going after are already suspicious people, uh, you know, yeah. by design. That's why he's going after them because they don't believe in COVID and all this other stuff. Right. They're skeptics. So, yeah. They're, they're complete skeptics. So he's got to then go, just stay at, he's got to fool them on so many different levels Yeah, that, that it's, it's crazy. And, and listening to him talk about it, it's like, it's really like, I love those types of interviews or and I, I wouldn't even call them inter- just conversations. Yeah. I, it's not my jam, but Joe Rogan is like that. The Joe Rogan experience is like, like that too. I like, depending on the guest, I, I will l- listen to a full Rogan. Uh, but yeah, like, he, I mean, he also does so fucking many, and and they're all yeah. like three hours long, so it's hard to 
It's yeah. hard to sit there, you know, multiple times a week and listen to a full Rogan episode. But like, <laughs> I say that, but then I binge like, uh, I was like five weeks behind on nonsense. And you should all go check out nonsense. Yeah, but... We only do an hour, <laughs> right? But like, I sit there and I I went through like four of those, and then I just listened to my buddy. I was I've been hounding him for weeks because his podcast is on Spreaker, and it's uh, late fees uh, with Matt Catanzano. Uh, and right. James, yeah, and so it's it's a delightful show. But he just had it on Spreaker, and I'm like, asshole, what are you doing? You it, there's a button that just says put it on all these things, and so, so finally he got it on Spotify, and that's how I listen to my podcasts. It's funny because uh, Andy, my my co-host on Nonsense, was doing another podcast uh, last week, and I I think I've just been doing this too fucking long, right. where. I didn't give a shit what the content was. I was nitpicking every technical problem they had. And I, I came to the conclusion uh, because they, they were recording it in, in one of those like rent a space in Staples. Oh, yeah. OK. And I'm like, OK, so not only is this technically awful, they're paying money. Why am I not? Why have I not started a fucking business, a, a fucking yeah. podcast? Because everybody's doing a podcast. Yeah, you just need the the podcast garage because I went. There's one in Cambridge well, right the, next. I, to I don't even need the the facility because I my thing would be I can tell you how to save so much fucking money by doing it in your home. Yeah, consulting. Literally, I have a I have like three feet of living space right now, and it's all the podcast, stuff, the camera, the light, the board, yeah. the microphone. It all fits right here, and there's no monthly fees. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? No, right. worse than that, I guess hourly fees. They pay the, these garages. You know, you, you pay per hour. And I think most of them are like a hundred bucks an hour. So it's like, right. uh, so why am I releasing this uh, publicly? We should be talking about this off air. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We should talk about this business plan later. Uh, but yeah. So I, I guess to, just to wrap up the, the conversation part of it, um, another one that I found, I think it was, uh, I'm guessing it was varieties again. Um, whenever, because they've done it a few times. Uh, Bill Hader and John Mulaney just talking right. to each other. They've, they've done this on a few different uh, YouTube channels. Yeah. Uh, but it's always, they never talk about like, it's always like basically two friends just throwing inside jokes at each other. But somehow right. it's fucking hilarious because these two guys are comedic geniuses. Yes. And it's like, you watch it and it's like, yeah, they, they, they didn't even promote anything and they didn't really talk about anything. But I enjoyed that 20 minutes thoroughly. Of course. So before we get to the movie, I do got to ask, what are you watching? I don't think we did that part of this. What am I watching? Yeah, like what shows are you watching? What movies have you been watching? Oh. <laughs> oh, shit. Not like, uh, what, yeah, what porn I'm, I'm, I'm have up you. on your monitor? I'm, I'm looking at you right now. <laughs> yeah, what porn, what porn are you watching right now on the monitor while we're doing this show? Um, so I, I watched, uh, last week I watched The Undoing on yeah. HBO Max. Um which I, I actually, uh, Andy and I talked about it on Nonsense a bit because he had watched it. Um, but yeah, it's it was good. It's a whodunit, and I think it's relatively new, so I don't want to spoil too much of it. Uh, it's it's a whodunit miniseries, so not like a series where there's going to be another season. So it's all wrapped up in the six episodes. And what it's one of those shows that like once they punch the gas on episode two, they just don't let up for the six yeah. episodes. And I was really happy with the finale because I thought I had figured it out at like episode three or four, what the, sure. what the conclusion, what the climax was going to be. And I didn't. And That's I love crazy. that. Um, yeah. because that was my problem. Uh, Jordan Peele's second movie us. Yeah. I caught the twist about halfway through. I'm like, Oh, okay. So she's a little girl. I, I got it. Yeah. And then by the end of it, it's like, that was it that like you went with, like, I thought that up. You know what I mean? Like, right. I, don't, I don't like watching things that I know I can think of. Sure. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. I know I'm a creative genius, but yeah, I don't, I don't right. like to, I don't actually like to see it happen because it's like, ah, shit. Because part of it's like, I should have done that myself. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, so I watched that. It's really good. Uh, and again, six episodes, quick binge watch. Um, of course, uh, WandaVision. Uh, oh. We're recording on a Friday. I literally just finished the newest episode before this, so yeah, it I wouldn't be spoiled. Yeah, I haven't seen it yet. And we can't you, you talk about it. Yeah, <laughs> you've I can't ripped the cord out of your modem, for, so you wouldn't even go online today. <laughs> right. 
Um, that's the, and the worst part is, is that we can't even talk about the other four episodes cause it's so fresh. And like, I know that like my buddy, Chris is like, he watched the first two episodes and then yeah. he's just like, you know what? I'm not going to watch any of it. I'm just going to binge it because I, I just want to know what happens and it's driving me mad. My, uh, my brother is a, is one of those that doesn't, he won't watch any of them. He'll binge them after they're all done. He did it with Mandalorian. It's how he watches all the shows. Uh, he, he also, has almost zero social media presence, which is good for him. So he can kind of do that. But for me, after an episode like this, it's like, I texted you and I'm like, I'm texting. I'm like, God, can you just watch the fucking thing? <laughs> yeah. Right. I, know. I need to talk to somebody. And, but, oh man, like it's, well, it's such a good show. It is such a good show. And there's things in there as like a TV person that, yeah, that I'm like, we well, just spotted one uh, that I know it's I, in the commercials, so I, I think that we can talk about well, that. It doesn't spoil it without it doesn't spoil it by saying what she did with you know you don't have to sell it, say the person or any of that stuff, right. but you know, go ahead, go ahead. So there's one point in uh, one of the episodes where somebody is getting tossed out of the bubble that right. like the sitcom takes place in, right? And the person breaks through three walls and then the fourth wall they go through and that's the bubble and they're back outside in reality. And that's such an old sitcom thing where in classic sitcoms, it's called when they like look or acknowledge the audience, they're breaking right. the fourth wall right. because the audience is the fourth wall. It's a classic like sitcom style. Well, it's a thing. phrase breaking the fourth right. wall is, is a, is a very common phrase. And you told me that off air. I've probably watched three or four of those every Easter egg in this episode. I watch them every Friday night uh, on YouTube uh, and not one of them mentioned that. And I didn't pick up on it. So that's like, that's yeah. really good. Like that, that attention, that that's what, one of the things I love about the show. Like I said it last week, like every time I watch it, uh, I, I'll, I'll make a post on Facebook, an extremely non-spoilery post, but the comments just fucking ruined that anyway. But yeah, of course they uh, so don't go look at my comment section if you want to don't if you want it spoiled. Um, but like, it's the best example, best recent example of a TV show like an Onion. Yes, the peeling back of every layer of this show, every episode, more and more layers get peeled, and it's like, fuck me, man. They are they really like. And, and I know I referenced this in, in our Ultron review uh, in the archives, uh, thatmovieshow.net. And um, it was what Chris Evans uh, told me when, when Ultron was coming out. And when I asked him to, because he couldn't reveal anything about it in the interview I did with him. Right. And I said, well, s give me one thing. Why Sell me on the movie. Why am I going to go spend $20 at a movie theater when we could go to movie theaters uh, to go see Age of Ultron? And, he, and his quote has resonated with me through the entire MCU, which was it's Marvel. They haven't made a mistake yet. Well, and they it's fucking even haven't. It's even more so than that, because we had the huge we had the huge release of Endgame. Endgame right. happens and we told the story. The story had been told. Right. And you know, I, I like Spider Man Far From Home. Sure. Uh, you know, I think it's really good. But and but it's just kind of inconsequential almost, you know, like it, it kind of happens on its own little Island. The post credit scenes, one really has to do with Peter Parker. So we can't like find out the furthering of that story. It's not like right. global Marvel, right. but then there's one that is with Nick Fury and it's just like, okay, what's this going to be? What is season two of the MCU look like? What is right. that? What is that? And, you know, is it going to be as good? Are they going to, you know, was this the story? I mean, look at how many times have, uh, has Ryan Murphy banked an entire, he's done an entire career on it, but it's just like, how many times has he released a gangbuster season one of a show? Everybody loses their mind about it. And it was just like, that was all I had. Right. I mean, I don't, I don't have, I don't, here's five more seasons, but right. I don't, I don't know. I, that was the story. I had Fuck that story. You know what I mean? Like, but that's, that's what happens is that like, you know, oh, we, you know, you can look at a bunch of shows where it's just like, oh, we had four seasons of a TV show. 
Right. And that was the story we told. And then, oh, but we need to have we need to have eight seasons, you know, and it just like that's what I was worried about with Marvel. And the execution with WandaVision is right. like, oh, no, oh, no, no, they definitely have a plan at the very least. At the very least, they can tell a very good story. Yes. With, at the, uh, at the very and, and, I mean, it's. Not only can they tell a good story, I mean, we knew they could tell a good story. I mean, again, they've done that. So telling a good story, but they are. So to, to your point about the, the Ryan Murphy analogy, it doesn't even feel like there's been that post end game hangover. No. And that's what because, I was because about. this is I, I mean, I get it. Sp- Spider-Man uh, came out, uh, but it was like. Spider-Man's on his own little island, it's, which it's is good. Um, and, and I guess it's one of those things that if, if you know enough about the Marvel Sony relationship, you understand why Spider-Man had to be isolated type right. of thing, because Marvel didn't know if they were actually getting him back type of thing and all that, all that shit. Yeah, like they right. almost didn't. Um, and who knows? It seems like every movie that every time they go to uh, film a Spider-Man thing, they're fighting with each other, even though it makes a billion dollars. So yeah. stop it. Stop fucking fighting. Stop, stop telling us you're going to take our Spider-Man away. <laughs> yeah, right. Because um, we all know how this happens. Eventually, Disney will just be like, how much? How, how much, much for Sony? How much for Sony? How well, much for Spider-Man? There, there's the... That, that's I, I posted that uh, that meme to our Facebook page. It was from uh, Infinity War where it's uh it's rocket and winter soldier and you go and you know it's the how much for the uh, how much for the gun i'll get that arm thing and it's you know how much for spider-man not for sale how much for sony and he looks at him and then it's rocket going oh i'm gonna yeah. get that studio <laughs> yeah like, they're just gonna buy sony also we talked about it uh either a week or, or the week before whenever we were talking about movies getting bumped and ghostbusters because that's a sony picture they right. don't have a good st- they're they're crackle so yeah. Sony Sony is widely for sale, it, whether they admit well, it or not. They well, don't the have a good is, presence. It's also Sony. Their business isn't movies. Their right. business is in electronics. Right. You know what I mean? They care far more about the PlayStation division than they do the movie division. Right. You know, they care far more about the television division than they do, right. you know, the movies. So. I I wouldn't be surprised if like you know again Sony comes in or Marvel at some point or more so Disney is just Disney. like how much how much is Spider Man I don't I mean, care about Ghostbusters how much is Spider Man you gotta imagine it's it's got to be one of their post COVID plans oh it has to be because when, you I know when, when things get back to when 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 everyone gets back to making money basically right. and and they can start like making these big deals and stuff it wouldn't surprise me in the least i don't i don't think sony's going to give up spider-man but i think they'll sell sony yeah sony I think, will sell I think, sony pictures I, I think i think sony will sell the film division and the library yeah. to disney i i yeah. completely see that well because you know and disney disney already has classically connection because mgm was bought by sony okay so that's so there's that there's that you know. So they've already, they've already bought some of their properties then because Disney yeah. owns the Wizard of Oz. I know that was one of the classic MGMs. Yeah, uh, so they, they have purchased that shit. Well, because uh, MGM MGM was going out, they were going out in kind of like what Marvel did with all of their properties. Right, they were just selling off rights to try and stay afloat. Oh, right. Disney, you want to buy the Wizard of Oz? Here, take it, because because <laughs> all we have is Adam Sandler's Happy Madison production who just moved into our lot. Is that Sony? Yeah. Yeah. He moved. So Sony's lot is the classic MGM lot and okay. uh happy Madison like yeah. moved into one of their production office facilities and they never left. <laughs> <laughs> and, and like you can go, if you go on a tour and I went on a tour once and Adam Sandler just like came out and like high five people. Adorable. Cause like he's actually like say whatever you will about his movies. I was just going to say, despite the movies he makes, he seems like a genuinely good human being. Well, the thing is, is, and, and I say this every single time is like, look, here's the thing. His movies aren't great, right? They're not great. But again, if you look at what he's doing, it's him making movies with his buddies and people are paying him to do that. Right. That's the fucking dream. As, and that's, that's the thing. Like as a consumer, 
Yeah. I, I, I loathe Adam Sandler movies. Yeah. As someone who aspires to make movies with my friends, yeah. fucking genius. Fucking yeah. brilliant. Like, why? Oh, yeah. Oh, so I get it. I get me. it. It's oh, me, so me and, and Chris Rock and, and Spade. We're gonna go to Hawaii this week. You want to? Yeah. You guys want to go to Hawaii because yeah. I don't know. Jamaica's doing really good right now. I don't now. know. <laughs> we're all like triplets. Uh, we're triplets, and uh, we found our dad, and he's the Rock. <laughs> right. That's even, story. Story comes after they pick the location. It's like, yeah. You guys. You guys want to hang out in uh, New England over the summer? It's nice. We go to Cape Cod, Martha's Vineyard. Maybe yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. We'll make Look a Halloween. That. We'll make a Halloween movie. Why not? Yeah, in the summer because fuck fall. <laughs> yeah, well, we'll do that, I guess. We're gonna paint it's gonna sale make him like Halloween. It's gonna make a couple hundred million dollars, so who cares? <laughs> that movie was so bad. Yeah. That movie was so bad. Yeah, of course it was. I mean, like so bad. <laughs> sure. Sure. And it's uh, and of course it came out after Uncut Gems. So you're like, is this the one he meant? Yeah, right. He, he didn't get his Oscar and said he was going to deliberately tank the next movie. Is this? Please let this be the next one because I can't. I don't know if I'm any more as a take. <laughs> yeah, this is this is bad. I can't do this. Um, so. so yeah, so I guess we can't get into any more Wandavision because that will just no, be spoilery. Be but uh, but so so fucking good. Like every every week, I'm just like, oh, is it Friday again yet? <laughs> can I we get know. to Can we get to next Friday, please? And I, I was hoping. So I heard a rumor last week. That someone on Twitter uh, released, a, like, basically the shooting scripts of the next two. It would have been this week and next week's episode. And that Disney was not only taking legal action against them, but because of it, they were just going to release the two this week. Obviously, that didn't happen. But I was hoping it was because they released the trailer for the, the next two episodes last week. So right. I, we got the five and six promo, and I'm like, maybe they're going to do it. I didn't want to watch the promo because it's such a good show. I don't, you don't have to sell yeah, me anymore. Well, you know? and we already ran out of promotional material. Right. Like, I don't, I don't, and that's the thing. It was like, um, like I remember back when, when Force Awakens was first coming out and the first trailer came out and, and I watched it and I was all jazzed up about it. I'm like, yes, great. And then I like avoided every time a Star Wars commercial comes on TV, yep. I'm, uh, I'm muting it. I'm looking down at my phone. You know, it's like, you don't need to sell me any, you have my $20. Please, please stop putting promos and trailers in my face. I yeah. will watch. I guarantee it. Stop. Right. It. Yeah. And that's how I feel about all these like big movies is because the just further like... they go, the more they ruin. Right. Eventually you're seeing the fucking ending of the movie in one of the promos a week before it comes out. Yeah. Right. Exactly. So I'm a hundred percent with you. Yeah. Um, you know, let's try and I don't want to, you know, what? I want to dissect and analyze, but I don't want to watch the promos. I'm not going to watch the promos. Yeah. Um, then I just watched a bunch of movies and, and my, my movie watching kind of was like for the last week has been very like one movie influences the next movie I watch sure. type of thing. Um, like like uh, earlier in the, the week, I watched uh, Donnie Brasco and then I watched Blow after that. Johnny right. Depp. Uh, I, it's, Donnie Brasco is such a good fucking movie. I forgot yeah. how good that was. It's one of those ones that I think I've kind of. It's one of the, like I, I don't know. I don't know how to put it. Like I've almost like avoided it, avoided the rewatch because I thought it was longer than it was. Sure, but it's not. It's only like an hour forty. It's like a super okay. easy watch. Um, but I think it it fell into that like my brain processed it as like a Goodfellas, like a three hour movie type of thing or yeah. a two and a half hour movie, uh, which it wasn't. And then uh, a couple days later, I watched the campaign with Will Ferrell and Galifianakis. And that movie gets funnier every time I watch it. Uh, Will Ferrell, especially. I think it's just absolutely comedic genius. Um, which then rolled into, God, I haven't seen The Distinguished Gentleman in like 20 years. So I watched that with Eddie Murphy from the 90s. And it's super 90s. <laughs> there is cross colors jeans everywhere. It is oh, yeah. so 90s. Um, which then, uh, of course, I'm sure my phones are just listening to me. So it... <laughs> Netflix recommended Dolomite is my name, which I watched when it first came out. I'm like, that was great. I haven't watched that in a while. Eddie Murphy, let's see it. I think also my brain is in that way because Coming to America sequel is out like in two weeks or three weeks. Sure. Uh, which the first trailer got me very excited. The second trailer, again, too much too much promotional things might ruin the movie type of thing. It's like I'm, now I'm, the second trailer has got me questioning it. Like I was all in on the first one, and now the right. second one starts to show more, and I'm like. I don't know. And then, then, and and now it's like, 
that big prominent PG-13 is slapping itself on this movie. And I'm like, mm, I don't know. I'm hoping. Fingers crossed. It's going to be funny. Right. Fingers crossed. Fucking fingers crossed. Man. I'm definitely going to watch it because I have Amazon Prime. So I'm just, just going to watch it. Uh, but Dolomite is my name is fantastic. Uh, which then as I'm watching that, I'm like, you know what? It's been a while, probably since we reviewed it, uh, that I watched Black Dynamite. So I went to the Blu-ray collection, threw that some bitch in and enjoyed my two hours. Uh, yeah. hour and a half. Uh, fiendish yeah. Dr. Wu. Fiendish Dr. Wu is Kung Fu treachery. Oh, no, 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 no. It's just, it's like as close to a perfect movie. It really is. As a, as a movie that's d- intentionally trying to fuck itself up, it is perfect in it. Perfect. Uh, perfect. and then I, then I went on a weird lethal weapon binge where I watched all four lethal weapons. Oh, okay. Yeah. So they still, again, uh, it's weird. Like movies like that, that, like you, you herald in your head as like classics and you, and you watch them back and it's like, why did we like this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, because the movie's absurd. Like, especially like if you just pay attention to Mel Gibson's character, Martin Riggs in these movies, he makes no sense. Oh, he goes from a depressed suicidal guy one minute to doing quippy one liners and being funny and having a good. It's like like the, the end of the first lethal weapon. Um, and, and, the, and then we'll jump in the swordfish real quick. But but the end of the first lethal, lethal weapon is utterly insane because it's yeah. like, dude, you were just tortured oh, with yeah. like electric shock shit and. Your partner, Murtaugh, who is a damn near retired cop uh, throughout the whole series, is also being tortured. Okay. Uh, And his daughter, who is an innocent high school student, is also being tortured. And then when you all gather back together in the same room after you murder a bunch of fucking mercenaries with a like shoot him in the face type murdering, Mel Gibson goes, what did one shepherd say to the other shepherd? Let's get the flock out of here. And I'm like, what the fuck is this movie? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, you went yeah. from like, he just rubs salt in an open wound on your partner and you're doing jokes. <laughs> and yeah. And you're doing <laughs> ha ha giggles. Like I'm watching it being like, Oh my God, the sunny guys nailed this fucking shit. Cause they did all those stupid, like, That's why right. is this happening tropes? And I'm like, Oh my God, these movies aren't as good as we remember them. No. no <laughs> and I'm not. like, and then it's like, Oh yeah. Shane Black, that's why. <laughs> Shane Black wrote him. That's why. Um, but but they're still just fun as fuck. They're, they're yeah. still absolutely fun movies. What did you watch before we get the swordfish? Uh, so I don't have as much detail on that. I've been on a TV show kick. Uh, the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers and the Power Rangers in general was aw- getting off of Netflix. So right. I watched the first five seasons, basically, of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. And then I'm currently watching Doctor Who. How do you do that? Doctor Who? Because th- isn't that kind of like, um, isn't Doctor Who, because I know they changed the Doctor a lot. Yeah. Uh, so is, and I've never watched Doctor Who. Sure. Um, is it an anthology or is no, like, each, so each, like, are they, are they just, the are they device... knowingly recasting the lead character and you're just supposed to buy into it's the same person? Yeah. So it is the same person. The basically the the plot device is is that the doctor is an alien, oh, right? Okay. So he's not human, and his race of people can regenerate. So they'll like tell a story with like because British TV is like kind of different, but they'll like have the character be one actor, and then basically that version of the character dies. Mm-hmm. And then he regenerates into the next one. So we had eight doctors uh, up until 2006. And then the show basically got canceled. It, mm-hmm. it, and so nine season nine started in 2006. Mm-hmm. They did one season with him. Mm-hmm. They did three seasons with the next guy. Mm-hmm. They did four with the guy after that. Mm-hmm. And then there's, and then that's where I fell off. I moved and didn't have BBC America anymore. Right. Um, but there have been two doctors since. And so they're all on HBO max. Right. And so I was like, Oh, I would love to get caught up on doctor who. Once and again, so, HBO just proving it's, it's literally the best streaming service out there right now. 
worth its weight in gold. Worth Fucking its weight Christ. In every gold. every month they just prove why and, they why they deserve my fourteen dollars again. Yeah, and it's like twelve seasons. Twelve seasons of it. So um, do people it. in the show um acknowledge the changing of the doctor? So he has a, he always has a companion, so he always has somebody with him because basically he's so smart and he's like so old and knows everything that mm-hmm. the audience is represented through the companion. So he's like always explaining stuff to the companion. Um, but that person always changes too. But what I, I guess what I'm saying is, is like, um, is there anybody who like is like people cross what, over. So what, what, the, what does Dr. Who do? So basically he travels in time and space. Um, basically he like, he, he like pops into stuff. And so, so, so he, is he like a, is he a crime fight? Like, like James Bond oh, yeah. is a spy, you know what yeah. I mean? And we changed James Bonds, but nobody acknowledges it. It's always the same dude. Like right. Daniel Craig is obviously Sean Connery. No difference in person. Yeah. So there's a, well, I guess what I'm over. asking is, like, is, is he, a, is he like a, a, okay. So, so, so he can teleport through time and space, but is, is he like, solving mysteries he's like scooby-doo yeah. or is he like a so basically everywhere he goes and like the stories are kind of like all over the place in terms sure. of the the type of stories they are but to give an example the like the first episode of the reboot there is this alien that's basically plastic mm-hmm. and it's taken over all of the mannequins in london okay. and what it's going to do is take over the world um, obviously it's going to take over the world. And so he <laughs> has to basically stop the, pl- the sentient plastic. Sure. And so here's the thing. Also, I think this should be mentioned. This show is very silly, like not in a, not in a, like it's a comedy silly, but like, it's like, it's definitely, you're either totally into it or you're not because it's goofy. Like it's kind of shocky almost a little bit. Right. It's that, it's I, kind I of get like black that, dynamite. Uh, I, I kind of gathered that um, through uh, two sh- two different shows. Uh, Ricky Gervais's Extras referenced yeah. the schlockiness, and uh, Toast of London also. Yes, uh, he, he's another one who plays an actor, uh, and it referenced the schlockiness of Doctor Who. So I always kind of had that. It was always kind of like right. um, low budget television, but like not really type of thing. It, sure. it had the, it had the f- from an outsider looking in, it had the feel of lo- almost like an Ed Wood movie. Yeah, it's kind of it feels exactly like the original Star Trek. Oh, oh that's exactly what I was thinking. Okay. Yeah, it's kind okay. of like the original Star Trek. And so like, yeah, that's episode 1 and that takes place in London and then episode 2 he goes to like the year 3 million. Okay. And they're going to watch the earth get blown up by the sun, like the sun's going to explode sure. and and basically somebody's trying to kill all of these like high dignitaries on this space station because like the technology would have them be safe to watch it, but they're going to try and murder everybody. And so he basically has to stop that. Uh, and then there's recurring villains and stuff like that. And okay. So, so, the, so the recurring villain, because I, I was following you and, and I guess it makes sense that if he's traveling to way all, all over the place yeah. years that people at face value can just take, okay, this is the doctor. But if you have recurring villains, do the villains ever be like, hey, you weren't a woman last time I saw you? Because it's a woman now, right? It's a woman now. Right. Yeah. And so, like, a lot of them, Has they... anybody ever referenced the fact that, hey, you used to be Peter Capaldi? You know? <laughs> it's like, and like, now you're so not? <laughs> that, was, that was the only thing that really annoyed me. So, Peter Capaldi is in an episode with a different doctor. He plays a he plays a guy that is in uh, Pompeii. He's just a Roman in Pompeii. So and Peter Capaldi wasn't the doctor. No, he was the doctor. But he, oh, okay. before he was the doctor, he was in this episode about Pompeii. So he was and, just an actor in another episode. Yeah, he was just an actor in another episode. But he was like he was ju- he was like a guest starring role basically in this. Uh, and so then when he became the doctor, I would like lost my mind because I was like, oh, this is going to be so interesting because like, oh, I bet he's going to like reference it. It's going to mean something. And then it never fucking did. So that that actually because uh, I just binged Lethal Weapon brings me back to that for a second. 
uh, there was a character. He was a detective in Lethal Weapon 1 and 2 named Willie. He was an older black guy. Sure. And then in Lethal Weapon 3, Danny Glover goes to this burger stand and there's a guy flipping burgers called Fast Eddie, who apparently they have known for a while, but he has no idea who Martin Riggs is, and he has to do a whole introduction. This is my partner Riggs, and blah, blah, blah. Meanwhile, Willie knew who Riggs was because they were in the same room multiple times talking to each other in the first two movies. It's the same fucking actor, and nobody acknowledges it. Oh, that's annoying. It's the same guy, and I'm just like, that's Willie, the detective, and why didn't you just make him, because he was around the same age as Danny Glover, it's like, why didn't you just have it be the retired detective that everybody knows? Yeah, right. Is it, is it just so you can get these weird jokes, these just getting to know you jokes in? Because it, re- it, it has bothered me for probably 20 years. <laughs> yeah. But along the same lines. Yeah, but it's, I love it. I love the show. It's fantastic. Uh, I'm getting to the end of the 10th Doctor. I'm about to watch his last episode and then um matt smith uh who was in terminator salvation um, so it looks like there's only 12 seasons um I just yeah Googled so it, it says 12 so I'm, I'm so the, it's tough because all of the like really old stuff uh, is not there like the classic mm. like doctors one through eight are not on hbo max oh tw- i'm sorry 26 seasons yeah so okay because it, it Google listed as 12. I clicked on the Wikipedia page and okay. So 1963 through 1989 looks like it was. Okay. Oh, wow. Even more than 26. So there was 26 original seasons from 63 to 89. Then they did a film in 96. Yeah. And then 2005 to present, there's been 12 seasons. So HBO max has the current run. Yeah. It has the current run since the reboot. Gotcha. And so that's what I'm watching. I'm not, I'm, I didn't start. I didn't start. I was going to say, cause geez, that, that's a lot. Yeah. Some of that stuff is lost to time because it was before they could tape. <laughs> you well, know it mean? actually, I mean, even the Wikipedia lists it as, um, a hundred, 862 episodes, but 97 are missing. Yeah. That's almost a hundred episodes lost to fucking time. Yeah, they're just lost to time. So, you know, it, but it's good. I mean, if you're looking for something fun to kind of put your, you know, get invested in, that's what I would recommend. Yeah, it'll take a minute or two. Okay. Swordfish? Swordfish. Who is he? He exists in a world beyond your world. What we only fantasize, he does. He lives a life where nothing is beyond him. He takes what he wants, when he wants. So how do I find him? You don't find him. He finds you. Good job. Senator, we have a problem. Did you know that I can buy nuclear warheads for 40 million each? Hell, I buy half a dozen and even get a discount. What do you think is going to happen if he starts tying up loose ends? My employer wants to meet you. He'll pay you just to meet you, Stan. Ever heard of Operation Swordfish? Nope. This is a sweet deal. Nine and a half billion. Do you have any idea of how much money that is? We're going over the phone lines, pop the firewall, sit back, wait for the money. So what we need from you, Stanley, is a worm. Marco, let's give him some incentive. Hey, what are you doing? I have been told that the best crackers in the world can do this in 60 minutes. Unfortunately, I need someone who can do it in 60 seconds. You're kidding. Go! 45 seconds. You're gonna get these people killed! 20. Who are you? I'm not what you think I am. More time, more time! Come on, stand! 15. I think that you think I'm a bank robber. Truth is that I'm worse. Control, be advised that this is now an aerial pursuit. Hold on. Three, two, one. Too bad, you gotta die. No, 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 wait, wait. Not everything ends the way you think it should. John Travolta, Hugh Jackson, Halle Berry, and Don Cheadle. Swordfish. Swordfish was released June 8th, 2001, had a box uh, budget of $102 million, and the box office had $147.1 million. Didn't make a lot of money, but there's an actual reason behind it. Um, it was written by Skip Woods, uh, produced, yeah. by, 
Skip Woods. It was produced by Joel Silver. Of course it was. Uh, yeah. Directed by Dominic Senna and stars John Travolta, Hugh Jackman, Halle Berry, Don Cheadle, Vinnie Jones, and uh, a cast of other heavies. Did you notice Owen Wilson's stunt double in this one? Yeah, I saw that. <laughs> I'm like, dude, if you're not Owen Wilson's stunt double, you really need to quit acting because that's the only – you are completely Owen Wilson, even the same fucking nose. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know why. It's uh, just God. You're. I don't know why. He ha- he has to be like I. I bet I would put five dollars on a bet that if you Google that actor, he's actually like Owen Wilson's double or something like that. Sure. Um. Okay. Swordfish. So, first thoughts. <laughs> first yeah. Thoughts. First. First thoughts. So, um, historically, this is uh this is the first time. This movie was when I uh, I saw it with I watched it with my dad. Uh, we lived behind a blockbuster, uh, so we lived behind a blockbuster. So on Friday nights, it was just me and him, and we walked over to Blockbuster, and this was like the hot new movie that had come out. I'm so not 12. theaters. Yeah, I'm like twelve or fourteen at the time, right? So like I'm starting to get into boobs, and this is the first time that I ever saw a topless scene. Like in a movie when my dad was in the room okay. and I just remember not knowing how to like handle it. Like I just was just, it was so awkward. Like I didn't know like what the deal was. I was yeah. just like, there's boobs on TV and I know what boobs are and I know you know what boobs are, but like, oh my God, like how do I, how do I respond? Am I supposed to, am I supposed to watch boobs on TV with you? <laughs> I don't know. I'm way too young for this. So that's my like first lasting takeaway Mm -hmm. of this movie. I remember watching it that first time and being so fucking confused because like the movie is bonkers. Oh yeah. But, but for like, again, like a 12 to 14 year old boy, I am hyped on the action. There's so much happening. There is so, so much happening that I loved it. Then I was very, very fond of it later. And then uh, I was watching it again. I had a fucking great time. It's definitely a movie of its time. Oh, a hundred percent. From the clothing to the, uh, to the ultra slick action and everything's yeah. cool and sexy to the, to that, the, the music is awful. Oh, yeah. it's that post it's that post matrix action, like early two thousands sure. action movie. Um, I, I, when I was watching about it, I tweeted out about, about it because I, I forgot how much I loved it, but it's yeah. the like super sexy underground villain club. Yep. <laughs> like that is always in all of these movies. Yep. Yep. Um, the funny you brought up the matrix, uh, cause the, the opening scene of the movie, uh, literally used the, the style that the matrix, uh, basically created, um, right. which, that that opening scene where it's basically a 360 shot of the explosion um, was used, and I believe I have the number here. It was used with 153 synchronized still cameras yeah. to to get that panoramic that three, 360 degree uh, shot. Um, speaking of the the explosion in the opening, they used that. He explains it later that that. Um, the hostages are wearing, you know, C4 vests, but they're also laced with um, ball bearings, making them basically the largest human claymore mine. Yeah. But they use that type of explosion almost throughout the movie, like the car explosion in the, in the parking garage had the same right. thing. And I think it gave it such a cool look because it looked like everything. Every time something exploded, the aftermath looked like it was shot with a thousand giant bullets. Yeah, it looked more like a um, like one of those like nail bombs. Yeah, they, like an IRA nail bomb. Yeah. So that's that's what it looked like to me. And but you're right, it, it gave a really cool effect. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, th- say, say what you will. This movie is definitely cool. It is. It's <laughs> really cool. I mean, again, the plot is fairly convoluted, very bonkers, and nothing really like. I'm glad that we've gotten over this, like trying to make hackers action 
mm-hmm. like when we're like hacking computers. Right. Because there's like a good like 10 to 15 minutes of this movie where Hugh Jackman is just like dancing in front of a computer with 15 screens. Mm-hmm. And it's just like. Oh. He's drinking, he's smoking, he's yeah. he's he's singing, he's yelling, he's cursing, he's he's he looks okay, so here here's what I found in my research. Um ob, I don't know if it was obvious or not, but every computer screen you see was blank on set. Of course. Everything was at all the screens and all the graphics on screen were added in post. So the actors were acting to nothing. So Hugh Jackman was basically just uh, doing one of those, basically like uh, like Mozart and Bill and Ted, the first one where he's doing the piano thing. Yeah, he's, but got, he's like, not mo- actually that's, playing. Yeah, that's all he's doing. He's just, he's just basically conducting an orchestra behind these monitors, and you can tell like, he's just slamming his hands down on the keyboard. There's nothing going on. No. It's more just. He, it was almost like they said, "All right, it's gonna be a fucking montage. Just yeah, go yeah. batshit." Right. You know what I mean? Because he's he's spinning in the chair. He's doing weird countdowns for no reason. <laughs> and, right. You know, it's like it's it's utterly insane. But it's also 2001 Internet, which yeah wasn't it, fleshed out back then. But yeah, it's you're also right. it's also so funny when you look at stuff like that, like in the future. Right. Because it's like, oh, look, we have this cube and the cube is rotating and like I'm putting different things on the yeah. cube. And it's just like, I don't know if you know this, but like I've like designed a website before through like Adobe Dreamweaver. And that's not what it fucking looks like. <laughs> oh, well, the uh, and again, even even just the multiple monitor thing. Like, I mean, yeah. I think it's almost standard now that everybody has multiple monitors, basically. I mean, you got two right over your fucking shoulder. I'm staring at two right now. Right. And, and it's hooked up to a third to my right. The the way the monitors were set up, and more importantly, what they were showing on the screens, it was like, what? none of this makes any fucking yeah, sense. Yeah, why do you need this many monitors? It's like, none, none of this makes any any sense whatsoever. Um, and, and just the positioning of it. Again, it was all done just to look cool. Oh yeah, 100%. The, the, the technical side of this is just done to look cool. But you're right. I mean, that, that was a trope of the late 90s because the internet was so new and cyber right. hacking was brand new. Hacking in general was new. So I mean, we had the movie Hackers. Right. Uh, the the one that actually one that actually made money was Sandra Bullock's The Net after Sandra Bullock became a thing in Speed. That was one of her follow-ups. Uh yeah. was The Net where the internet's killing everyone and oh, erasing, no. erasing our identities. And it's like, oh. and again, they, they didn't know what the internet was going to become back then. Right. So they thought they made it seem it was so simple. You could just type into what then became Google yeah. someone, someone's name and hit the delete key and they're erased from existence. Yeah, right. <laughs> I wish it was that easy. Right. Some, some people in Congress wish it was that easy. Seriously. I'd love to get off the grid for a minute. <laughs> yeah. Right. Uh, but yeah, it's just, it's so funny. Um, another scene that really kind of sticks out to me is like in the beginning of the, like the meeting between Gabriel and uh, I forget what Hugh Jackman's name is. Johnson Jobson. No. <laughs> um, no. No. What is his last? What's his name? Uh, hang on a second. Uh, Jobson. Stanley. Stanley Jobson. I got Stanley as a credit here. Um, I don't know. Yeah. His, his, I just remember his last name being stupid, but <laughs> I'm pretty sure it was that. Anyway, so Stanley and Gabriel meet and he ruins boners for that man forever because he basically makes him have to hack into the department of defense with a gun to his head while some chick just gives him a blow job and he does it. And so it's just like, Oh, that man definitely won't be able to have normal sexual intercourse ever again. The best part was he fucking comes halfway through and Travolta just goes, oh, she's good, isn't she? And it's like, as a kid, you don't get that joke. Yeah, now you right. do. And it's like, well yeah, done. Like, <laughs> yeah. Dude, you're n- and then he references it later when he goes into the bathroom. Just like, I'm going to need you to give me a like, put a gun to my head. <laughs> and it's just like, oh, I'm sorry, man. But you're fucked from now on. You're never go- you're never going to sexually be satisfied ever again. Because <laughs> Travolta ruined boners for you, and I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. 
Oh shit. You know, um, he was happy living his like Texas oil field trash yard life. What was he? Oh, like it's just like I get that it. opening scene is bananas. His because, entire well, his, his opening scene. Is, yeah. It's like ah. so we we meet Stanley. I'm gonna go with Jobson. Um, yeah. and yeah, he's basically introduced to us as Bruce Willis in Armageddon. Right. He's in a towel hitting golf balls at oil rigs in Texas. And like his he was just released from prison and he was only in prison for two years. So his ex-wife is already fucking moved on. And it's just like he went away for hacking, right? Yeah. Like he, yeah. he went away for like it wasn't like you found out your ex-husband was Ted Bundy. You the know what I mean? The story is very muddy. Oh, um, it's, well, it's also so lame. And I like this is the type of thing that like annoys me in movies. And it's like, look, I get it. We got to yada yada through it. And we got to hate the ex-wife. Right? right. But it's just like, like, that's not how people act. Right. Well, like you have a 10 year old daughter at this point. Her, and- that, that whole living situation. When you watch it with a uh, with a critiquing eye, as we were today, right. is insane. Oh, it um, is. So Drea DiMatteo plays the the ex wife Melissa, and she is um, she's clearly living with a porn producer, right? In and and it's almost like I was watching it, being like, they just needed to let us know who. Is who the child is living with because if you she does a walk okay so he calls her Hugh Jackman yes. calls Drea DiMatteo and she picks up the phone in bed okay first thing she does is lights a cigarette and you and if you're just looking at the surroundings it's gross yeah there's, um, there's panels. it looks it looks the best way to describe it quickly is it looks like the aftermath in the hotel room of the hangover right Right. There's just there's the only thing missing and drugs is- and porn and there's just stacks of porn boxes, but there's also p- like filming equipment like TV, like cameras and lights. And it's like so right. they film porn in their house and they distribute it from their house because there's just stacks of the same movie boxes all over the place. And then right. over here is a 10 year old's bedroom. And it's like, yeah. You just needed to establish worst possible scenario. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and again, it's just like, yeah, because that's what it is, is that in as little time as possible, I need to root for Hugh Jackman to, like, get his daughter back. She because that's a all 16 we're doing. ounce glass of vodka and then scoops ice out of a bucket and throws it in. It's like, OK, I get it. Garbage person. Yes, I, yeah. I, I know who you are now. And, right. And also, we're not going to be sad when you die later. Yeah. <laughs> and but like that's the part that's the part of par, that's the problem with this like woman because it's like you've painted this woman as being a scumbag. Right. And that person wouldn't all of a sudden have the like moral high ground on Hugh Jackman. You know no, what I mean? And, and and what they're what they're explain what they explain away is money gets you everything. Right. And, and clearly the porn producer. And that, that's where um, Ginger, who's Halle Berry, uh, that's where her line about the hundred grand, he'll throw 500 grand back at oh, you. Oh, yeah. Type of thing comes in. It's like, yes, money can buy you everything. But you're right. In a real world, uh, it doesn't. Here's the thing. There are definitely serious cyber crimes in the world. Yeah. But, but when they start breaking down what Hugh Jackman actually did. Yeah, right. He would have been hired by the FBI, not thrown in jail by the FBI. Right. And like, that's oh, and how he works. He, he's a very um, he's non a, like, threatening hacker. Right. Like whatever he did was like cause based or something. And so it's like, hey, help us. And again, It it's the exact same plot point as the woman who is Garcia in criminal minds, right? She was a hacker, but she was like a justice hacker or whatever. And sure. so then they were like, look, here's the deal. You can either go to prison or work for the FBI. Right. And so she's like, all right, I'll work for the FBI. But it's just like, you went to jail for two years. <laughs> like you yeah. went to jail for two years for what amounts to a white collar crime. 
You know uh, what I mean? So, so yeah, let me see. I, I just found it here because uh, Agent Roberts is played by Don Cheadle. Yeah. And and they're reviewing, and apparently he's the one that locked up Stanley, right? Right. So they're going down their past ship because every time two people meet each other, they got to run down literally their backstory. You know, exposition, exposition. Yeah. Uh, so apparently Stanley hacked into the U.S. government's carnivore system. Yeah. And he claims Stanley claims he did it because the government was illegally spying on U.S. citizens' emails. Yes. Now, at the time, that sounded insane to people, but, but then 9-11 the happened and Patriot Act. Um, <laughs> and just just to get it out of the way, since we just since I just mentioned 9-11, uh, that's the reason the movie didn't make money. Uh, because oh, yeah. it, it was yanked from theaters because 9-11 happened because there's a lot of buildings Building. being blown up in, in the, uh, in the yeah, movie. So it, it got yanked from theaters uh, when 9-11 happened. Uh, so that kind of stunted its box office. But, yeah, yeah. So, so that's what he was doing. He, he hacked into the government because they were spying on, peop- on the citizens' US. emails. Yeah, U.S. Yeah. citizens' emails. Again, that's the type of guy that you're like, all right, well, let's stick him in a cubicle and, and have him work shit out. Like, right. and, and, oh, we're the government. We'll get your daughter back. Yeah, right. Yeah, <laughs> oh, your, your daughter's living in a literally the, I don't know, a porn garbage can or something. Like, yeah, she's living right. in the dumpster of fucking porn valley. Yeah. yeah so are you we'll telling me she's porn Harry Potter? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> she's, like, living under the stairs <laughs> at a porn mansion? Like, they couldn't have made that place less kid friendly i know and so uh, but, yeah. but also like in the the devil's in the details type of thing so the daughter's 10 years old right yeah we'll, we'll say 10 yeah and he's been in jail for two years right so she was eight when he went to jail maybe seven if we're pushing it um so she obviously re- obviously knows him obviously remembers him as dad because that whole interaction happens right. and, and she's very happy to see him problem i have is when uh, Halle Berry makes reference of her when she's trying to convince Hugh Jackman to come work for them, he kind of he gazes off at the family photos and they're all of her as a baby. Yeah, right. Well, why did they have like a a recent picture of this girl? The only thing that that makes sense is that he that was like what he had on him, right? Like that was like those were like wallet pictures. He's, and so, yeah, but again, that's like that's not having a picture of your do- like because he was he was free for the first seven years of her life. That's like not right. having a picture of your daughter for like the, the five real years. Question, it feels like he went to jail in Texas, and when he went to jail, his wife just like fucked off mm. and took everything. That's why he's living. So like he just physically doesn't have a photo, sure. and it's because his ex wife is a garbage person. That would explain it. That's that's the only mental like reasoning I can do. Because I've been watching Lethal Weapon, I'll go with that's pretty fucking thin. But yeah, <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Oh, it is. It's pretty uh, thin, but yeah. we'll go. We'll go with that. Uh, um, I yeah. liked how the movie opened with a Travolta monologue, which basically is uh, the tagline for this show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Hollywood Hollywood makes shit movies. It's like, well, welcome to that movie show, everybody. <laughs> yeah, Hollywood makes shit movies. And we're going to talk about that. Uh, he goes into, and again, this is, this is really like, I, I got to pull up Travolta's IMDb real quick, because this is really bordering on the, the wrap up. Yes. Of the post pulp fiction cool, uh, like he's he's using up all his cool points, like yeah. towards two thousand one at this at this fucking point, uh, but he's still got enough of that pulp fiction clout on him that he's, I mean, the dude is dripping cool. Oh, he is. Everything about him in this movie is fantastic. Um, he he every like the way he talks, his mannerisms, and they use the reference. They use the reference of like he lives in a world that we could only dream of or something. Oh my god, the introduction to him, the the fucking it's bonkers. Yeah, he pulls up in the car. And of like, course the car has to be European, and so he's driving on the other side of the car. Like we right. he's driving in the passenger side of the fucking car. Um uh, he gets out and I mean it's Travolta, so part of it's like Yes, we we all know that Travolta is an over exaggerating type of actor. So yes. he gets out of the car and he doesn't just step out and close the door. He basically pirouettes so his jacket flails out and his <laughs> yeah. hair fluffs out and he's he kind of snaps and signals everybody. It's like 
if you didn't do Broadway, you wouldn't be able to pull this fucking character off. Right. You know I mean, if you were not a musically trained person, like you can almost see him tap dancing through the goddamn thing. It's yeah. really, really mar- remarkable. Um, yeah, I'm, also- looking at the, I'm looking at the IMDb right now. So he does this. And then the next several films that he does yeah. are Domestic Disturbance. Underrated. Uh, he, yeah, underrated, but good. Uh, Austin Powers, he had that cameo yeah. uh, in it. So yeah. that doesn't really count. I just wanted to mention it. Yep. Um, but then Basic, which Ooh. I absolutely love. Really that movie good. is so good. Uh, he was the villain in The Punisher. Oh, the good one. Then uh, Love Song for Bobby Long. I have no idea what that is. Well, he's Ladder 49. Character, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Ladder 49. And, okay. then, and then Be Cool. And that's where I cap it. Because once he does Be Cool, that's when we start getting Hairspray, Wild Hogs, Bolts, you yep. know, Old Dogs, like yep. that, that sort of stuff. So I'm going to cap it at uh, Be Cool in 2005 is the end. Yeah, but this is definitely, I mean, just even looking at that, this is definitely, like, the Punisher kind of dips into it, but I don't think his part was big enough in the Punisher to kind of, to, to give him the the freedom to, like, this, yes. is the last, this is the last, like, super uber cool character, like, this is the, yeah. he's transitioning from face off and broken arrow and, and like, yeah. all these, like, like guys that aren't supposed to be cool, but because Travolta's got it and we're in the late 90s, it's, he's going to have every cool line and he's going to do it with full air. right yeah so yes uh, also th- they have battlefield earth in there but whatever we're not going to yeah. talk about that yeah battlefield <laughs> like battlefield earth was the year before but yeah yeah i mean l- even lucky numbers okay so i just saw that saw that as i was scrolling uh have you ever watched lucky numbers i have not all right we'll we'll add that later on to to get that one on because lucky numbers is one of the more underrated comedies like i belly laugh still at that movie okay it's really funny uh and the cast is ridiculously outstanding in it um but even that he was really good in it and really and that one i wouldn't say he was cool but he was really good in it um but yeah swordfish definitely while basic and domestic disturbance while he was good in them he wasn't like the cool character yeah like this is like this is where where travolta and and i think one of the 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 cool Travolta tropes is he always smokes his cigarette super fucking weird. Yeah, he smokes a he's cigarette like he does, it, he's never smoked a cigarette in his life. Yeah, he's like holding it like this the whole time. Yep. yep. And it's just, oh no no it's even this is what this it's, is it's the like way. this yeah yeah fucking screwdriver here so so he he holds it like yeah like this like I don't I don't know what I would ever hold in my hand that would be like this um, yeah. I, I don't know. Like, I'm looking at how I'm holding the screwdriver, and I'm like, what would I ever hold right. like this? But even, like, um, when, when he smoked in Pulp Fiction, which then tra- transferred over to uh, Broken Arrow and Face Off, it was always the, the flailing pinky when he smoked. He would, right. he would do, do, like, he would smoke, and his, his whole hand would be involved in it. Involved in the way. But yeah. it was, like, weird. And, it and like- it's like... I remember, I remember being a kid in, in '94, watching Pulp Fiction, watching him smoke, and I'd be like, "That's the coolest way you smoke ever," and it's an, uh, utterly insane. Yeah, it's absolutely <laughs> bonkers. That's how an alien but, would 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 smoke. Like, you, you, yeah. have we checked his blood? <laughs> the, the only thing about this character, and I bet he would have done a bang up job with it, but if we made this movie in like 2020 or 2021, sure. The only thing it was missing was. Close up magic. Like, <laughs> <laughs> and look, hear me out. That's insane. But, but it's like the entire plot and his entire character is him talking about misdirection and yeah. like yeah. the, the subtext and like all that sure. stuff. And I don't know, like, again, this was in 2001, so they didn't even like think about this, but it's like, I would have had John Travolta's character not be a smoker, unless John Travolta's really a smoker, he can smoke, but I would have him fiddling with a deck of cards the whole time where he's just shuffling cards and like flipping sure. different, you, you know what I mean? Because it that's like the theme of the movie and it really gets lost in mm. that 
like up until the like up until he, the, soft the, the, the narration. Yeah, the, the soft flashback. Um, I mean, I can I can say that one of one of the things that has always bothered me about Travolta smoking in movies is that he's not a real smoker sure. because he never inhales, and it always annoys me when sure. when people in movies are smoking but not inhaling. Uh, in this one, he has cigars, so it's it's it, he gets a pass. But like in Pulp Fiction, when he's sitting there smoking and he's just not inhaling, and I'm like, oh my god, that's so like, yeah, sure. Like I'm not, come smoker, on. so I I never noticed, but oh, but it's it bo- just like, always bothered me. <laughs> but it's like it 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 just would have added a little bit more depth to everything. It was ludicrous. <laughs> yeah, but it, not it, you know it just it would have given him something that kind of ties it all together because sure. like. You're watching this movie and they're talking about like it's very like referential, I guess, where they're just referencing movies and like different things with like twists in it and stuff. And it's like, I get it. You're in Hollywood, Hollywood movie about Hollywood, whatever. Well, but it's, is is this the same character from Broken Arrow? <laughs> yeah, he survived. Because, because think about think about what he kept talking about. Ali and the rope dope and misdirection the whole fucking right. movie and he was a patriot who was trying to defend America Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. maybe if that man didn't get or blown up by a nuclear guy, warhead or, or was the dead body that Hugh Jackman saw in the his fucking freezer brother. that was the guy from Broken Arrow he stole his body and then took his identity and, and face off his face <laughs> oh <laughs> It's really Nicolas Cage. <laughs> it's really Nicolas Cage. Wow. Oh, Bishop yeah. technology. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. You're right. Fuck. Like, I just unzipped like, this one. <laughs> ultimately, ultimately, the plot of this movie is bananas. Yeah. And it feels like we don't need the hostage part of this at all. Because it feels like they just needed to get into the bank yep. to, like get to the wire transfers and stuff. And it like, they talk about how it's like, Oh, we're going to go in through the phone line or whatever. And it's just like, Oh, that makes a ton of sense. How come we didn't do that? Why did we like drive Hummers through the wall to like take everybody hostage so that we could just hook the computer up? Because it looks cool. Uh, Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yes. There, there is definitely a much quieter way to do yeah. this it's literally have one guy and hugh jackman either on the side of the building or on the roof of the building wherever the wires go into the building tap into that tick 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 take the money and fuck off right or at the very but, most but at movie. the very most you break in at night I'm not sure why we needed two hours of this setup. Like yeah, they like, literally just battle barricade. Uh, I'm a battering rammed through yeah. the bank. Like, why did you need all that? Why right. did we need a montage of him tapping on a keyboard and drinking yeah. and smoking? And all of a sudden, Hugh Jackman's a random smoker out of left field. Like yeah. every again, late nineties, everybody smoked. Yeah, um, smoked. Yeah, it was still okay. it's, like, it's recommended by five out of six dentists or something. You know what? It was peer pressure from the movies. I blame Hollywood. Yeah. <laughs> they I, made it look so cool. So. Um, but yeah, it's like you're right. The, the, the why didn't we? What's out of well, out of left well, field, man? And then the other part too is like, okay, so it's revealed after you murdered a senator that you're like a part of a a secret like military operation. And it's like, okay, I've heard of that before. Like sure. it's the plot of countless video games and sure. like movies and stuff. So it's like, sure. Chuck Norris is in this division. I, and Arnold Schwarzenegger, you know, so sure. I get it. Fine. Sure. But it's just like, so then why, like, why did you, you, you did this to be like a terrorist attack as you like, you're coming out party. Is that, is that what it was? I mean, I'm more concerned with the fact that they um, they flew out to this uh, wide open fly fishing area, shot and then left the senator's body wide open. Uh, yeah. Just just straight up murdered him and just left him in the in the river. Yeah. And then right. dramatically blew up a parking garage with his assistant in it. Yeah, I don't know why. And it's never mentioned again. Yeah, we just need to tie up those loose ends. I guess a senator 
was murdered while fly fishing, and that shit doesn't make news. Right. Nobody's like, and, hey, maybe he's connected to him, and 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 he. Mur-. No, no. We just it okay. also it like it simultaneously <laughs> it simultaneously like also Thomas Jefferson never shot a man on the lawn of the White House. That's actually a rumor. This movie started. That's so funny. <laughs> that's hilarious. and that's the true story. It, it actually in the trivia of this is uh, Thomas Jefferson says. did not shoot a man while on the White House lawn for treason. This movie is the source of that rumor. <laughs> That's so funny. That's so goddamn funny. But it's like, it doesn't, it simultaneously like makes John Travolta the bad guy, but then like doesn't come back at all in the story. No. You know what I mean? Like at no point, at no point does this, does he like shoot the Senator because the Senator tried to kill him. So like, he's now not rogue with the government or, you know, it's just like, it's such a weird well, I think I think because um, I guess it's insane, but let's try to make sense of it for a second. Yeah. Um, I think the senator was acting on his own, right? Yeah. So it wasn't like Travolta. It's not like the senator was like head of some government thing. It's just the senator. There was this money Travol- and Travolta. Their idea of patriotism aligned and he probably used to work for him in like whatever the militia was before back in the day whatever war that was so he's like okay so you get your crew and we'll funnel money to you and you're going to stop like that was kind of what he was alluding to when it's like if you blow up a church i'll blow up 10 churches type of thing right well that doesn't make sense it, it kind of it explains it <laughs> you know it's right like, yeah why wait a minute you're well, gonna blow up 10 churches <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> yeah. It's also like, I, I again, that line sounds cool. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's like, it's, all right. It sounds yeah. cool. But again, it's just like, okay, so like all of this makes sense if you're like the Mandarin from Iron Man 3. You yeah. know what I mean? Where it's like, I blow up, I blow up 10 churches because you blew up one. And then I go on TV and tell you about it. Well, right. I, I guess the subtext to it is, is um, the senator uh, and Travolta uh, wanted to have the rest of the world uh, fear America, so they would never attack America. That was that was the underlining thing. And who would have guessed how wrong you were? <sighs> wow. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, it, they they did it in an absolutely crazy way. In a very, uh, very yeah. 2001 type of way. <laughs> yeah. With, yeah. With super bad music. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's just, it oozes that post, like, you, and you can see it when these movies, like, come out, right? And uh, they're, like, the influence of whatever that big gravity movie is. Because it's, right. like, Matrix comes out, yeah. and then that influences all these movies that just kind of circle around it. Action and techno. Yeah, that, that's what we got. I mean, Blade was kind of like that, too. Right. Um, and, and even used similar styles to it. It had the underground layers type of thing. Right. Triple X. Triple X. Oh, my God. <laughs> I saw I saw a fan theory that Triple X is actually a Dominic Toretto's fan fiction of himself. Uh, so that was my buddy. That was my buddy. Was it Matt. you that I saw it? Because I, yeah. I, I, again, so, things just come into my head. So I, when I'm scrolling, that was you. Yeah. So my buddy. So I'm listening to my buddy Matt's late fees, okay. and he, they were talking about Triple X, and he was saying how it's um, all of his other like Dominic Toretto is the like the real person. It's like my Keanu verse, sure, right? Sure. And so it's hit. Dominic Toretto is the real person, but triple X is like, if he was James Bond and then like bloodshot is if he was a superhero. Yeah. hundred <laughs> percent. I, I, I buy that one. That, that's, that's easy. <laughs> so it was so <laughs> funny when I heard it, I was just like, Oh my God. It's so funny. That is so goddamn funny. Um, yeah, this it's, the, yeah, I guess the, the best way to put it is it's definitely a movie. It's time. Um, like for a man that has everything meticulously planned out, why did we need to almost murder everybody with the bus? Why didn't you just land the bus on the plane? Cause you were clearly going somewhere like, so, well, 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 the escape was a fuck up like, like that, that was like, they weren't, the bus was, so they, they were supposed to obviously hook the bus with the helicopter, but it wasn't supposed to snap. (laughs) 
<laughs> yeah. And all of a sudden go vertical, which then caused people to fall out, which then caused their their dog collars, which great trick, by the way, that the, the, the collars to the bomb vests right. were actually dog collars and the bank and then the bus were the yard. So if they leave yeah. that, boom. Oh, great. That's a completely dumbed down way that I understand how this thing works. I don't need yeah, any right. more intricacies. It's a dog collar. Dog gets shocked when he leaves the yard. Yes, I get that. I yeah, get that. right. It's an electric fence. So and we just made this the electric fence. So that, so that, um, they fucked up and that's why they, they were hitting buildings and stuff like that. I don't think they were trying to kill people with a bus. It was just, again, misdirection. We're, we're subverting right. what you think we're going right. to go. You think we're going to zig and we're going to zag. You think we're going to the plane, but we have a helicopter up here and it's like, woo. Yeah. So it's like, that's, that's the thing. And that's the problem when you like your whole movie is based around, like it was all a misdirection because yeah. it's like, all right. You were always trying to get to the helicopter. Sure. Like that was the point. The point was to try and get to the helicopter. Correct. Because that's where the like alternative clone John Travolta, <laughs> like, like I don't well, know. Even, even so, even getting to the helicopter, the plan was still to blow up the helicopter, which I don't really get because Hugh Jackman was the one that blew up the helicopter. Right. Now, granted. Again, this all could have something to do with the fact that the bus fuck up happened and Vinnie Jones fell out of the bus because Vinnie Jones was supposed to be the one with the, the grenade launcher. So maybe it was supposed to be the helicopter takes off and he fires it. But because he fell out of the bus, right. they were just hoping that Hugh Jackman picked up the launcher and did it because, yes, the body that was in the wine cellar was in the helicopter and Travolta snuck away and... I mean, how do you disappear? Because everyone knows exactly where the fuck you are. And all you're doing is going down the stairs yeah, or elevator of a building. Like, right. boo, spooky mask. I'm going to put yeah. my mask on. Like, how do, I, they this they really, the really didn't explain how he got away. Well, he just then, ran downstairs. <laughs> yeah, they also then have the, like, the point break fast and furious moment where like they go to identify the body and at no point does it feel like Don Cheadle has like arrested Hugh Jackman. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, you still were like a part of this. Like, yeah. I feel like you should be like, yeah, you shot. Uh, first of all, you also murdered a bunch of people because you shot a rocket launcher at a helicopter. <laughs> so yeah, why I mean, aren't you in jail? There would definitely be some questions. Um, Movie law, however, is wildly different from real law. And if you were uh, if you were forced into doing something, then you can kill the bad guys without repercussion. <laughs> sure. Yeah, you're right. You're <laughs> so, right. I mean, they they kidnapped his daughter. They forced him to hack all this money. They murdered his ex-wife. I mean, yeah, he shot a rocket launcher at a helicopter, killing the pilot and a couple other people. And to their knowledge, Travolta as well. Yeah, and and the girl who he said uh, got shot after she was hung. Yeah, she her body she never showed up. So she's also just... not a part of the DEA. But yeah, you know what? Go pick up your daughter from school. Yeah, you're, <laughs> you're gonna be able to roam the countryside with your Winnebago. But we have no further questions. <laughs> yeah, but it's just like so he pulls the thing back and he's looking at it and then like has the saw flashback. Yeah, where he like puts all the pieces together and then like at like at the end of Point Break or Fast and the Furious, he's like, huh, he did get away. <laughs> well, <laughs> now here's the thing. The Hugh Jackman not giving a shit that he got away. I can go with that because it's not like Hugh Jackman has been really friendly with Don Cheadle. Yeah. You know I, what know. I mean, it's like they try to kill each other a bunch of times and he John Don Cheadle put him in jail. And now it's like, eh, I'm kind of done helping you. Yeah, I, I know this isn't him, but, you know, I'm not going to be your Kaiser Soze. I'm just going to get my daughter. Yeah. Although, you know, damn well that they that when they made this movie. They were expecting that ending to be yeah. as iconic as the Kaiser Soze ending. Oh, 100%. It just, it was, here's, here's the difference between the ending of Usual Suspects and the ending of Swordfish. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, go on. Swordfish, as we've been saying through, throughout this t podcast, is too much a time capsule movie. Right. 
Usual Suspects is almost timeless. Like yeah. it, it doesn't it doesn't matter that it took place in the nineties. There's nothing that says nineties about it. Right. This you look at it, it's like that is so late nineties. Oh, that the is, computer, like, the like dripping. crazy computer the, that you're talking about could not handle the video editing that we do. No, no, absolutely. <laughs> let alone hack everything impossible. Right. Um. So that that's what I feel. Uh, also, Usual Suspects is a masterpiece of writing. <laughs> so, yeah. so there's that. Swordfish wasn't going to be well, nominated for a fucking Academy Award. So there's well, that. Because the the big difference between those two is is that they show you what verbal kint took inspiration from sure. right they show the cup they show the thing on the board they show like all the stuff so it's just like oh that's how you got there and it's like yeah i understand that this is the dead body that you had in the like in the wine cellar like i understand that but what is the like what is that body like where did you where did you get it why did you why do you have it? Like, obviously, well, it was the plan the whole time, but yeah, and, and it's kind of yada yada as um, we're in kind of a face off way where he says, I've changed my identity so many times, meaning like the dead body is the real guy and he kind of plastic surgery to his face. And that's kind of what they allude to, even though yeah, okay. they don't change his face at the end of the movie, but they give him the Bill Clinton haircut. It looks like he's going for sure. a primary colors audition, but it's like. <laughs> Oh, well, they changed his hair. Also, the ending where they're literally driving the boat towards a uh, a big fucking oil tanker that they're going to blow up. Yeah. Maybe drive the other direction because people are going to see you. <laughs> yeah, it's weird. Um, yeah, and so it's like, are we going for a franchise? Were you, like, hoping that John Travolta was going to, like, go around know. the world and, I like, I don't kill think terrorists? They were. Yeah, I, I really don't think they, they were shooting for that. Um I, I think they were. I don't. I don't know what they were going for. I don't, and 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 the fact that he gets away alive with the money and is continuing his plan in this universe, right. um, kind of muddies the question of who the bad guy really is in this movie. Right. I mean, it's kind of Don Cheadle, right? I guess. Like that's because like, because Hugh Jackman gets his daughter, and Travolta and Halle Berry get away with the money. Right. And John, Cheadle gets nothing. He gets a fucking corpse of a fake guy. Yeah. The senator was, was I don't know, maybe a bad guy, but he's right. dead too. Right. And the, Well, and that's the thing. It's like the senator might have been the bad guy, but the senator was eliminated before the third act. Right. <laughs> so so who, who is the bad guy of Swordfish? Tweet at us, yeah. at Mike Wint, at the Eddie McCabe. Um, I will say this, though. I absolutely loved... Uh, the use of lighting in this movie. Oh yeah. Um, a- every part of it, like, especially like the, the greens in this movie were very, I, I, I want to say kind of unsettling, but also very cool and aesthetic, but just all the different lighting techniques they were using were really well done. Yeah. The color um, palette of like what Los Angeles looks like. Yeah. Yeah. Just it really, again, it's probably, I don't know. I've, fifth or sixth time i've watched this movie yeah um realistically and you, the more you watch stuff the less you actually pay attention to the movie and you're just watching little nitpicky shit and just watching the backgrounds of this movie is like it's really well lit yeah you know what i mean and that that's really what i took away from it and even the the changing of like like the club scene like you said the underground villain club um yeah the, the way they lit it so that Halle Berry's dress from the moment she leaves the elevator to the time she gets to the table is like four different colors. Yeah. It, it's like it starts as red, then it turns purple and blue and it's green. And it's like, what the fuck? Like, that is awesome. Yeah. Like that That's like people talk about, you know, and again, totally different movie that I'm going to reference here. But people talk about the the one shot of walking through the back of the Copa in Goodfellas and how long it took <laughs> yeah. to light. How long did it t- take to, for them to light Club Hell here in Swordfish? Because that was geez. pretty awesome. <laughs> it was. It was pretty yes, awesome. Swordfish, on par with Usual Suspects and Goodfellas. <laughs> yeah. Duh. Challenge me. <laughs> Duh. Fucking fight me, internet. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Swordfish? That's swordfish. That is swordfish. 
Um, uh, once again, we got to start doing prep more often. <laughs> um, so I've been coming. I've been coming in with uh, options. All right. Uh, so, and I, I'm guessing you're doing this because you don't want me to just spit out a dice movie. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Well, basically, what ends up happening is, is I, um, I like see movies and then I like scroll through because like stuff I want to watch. Sure. And then I'm like, oh, this would be a fun thing to actually watch. Okay. Uh, so the options I have are The Shadow. Starring Alec Baldwin. Uh, the Matrix Reloaded, because I'm pretty sure we already did The Matrix. No, we haven't. I, oh, we haven't done The Matrix. Nope. Oh, well, The, I figured, the Matrix. I figured we were going to save that for around when the fourth one comes out, but that's oh, yeah. like sometime. It's happening. So It's in April, I think. Okay, so we can, but, all right, so we'll help so we that one. Um, the Mummy, starring Brendan Fraser. Sure you don't want to do The Mummy, starring the CGI Dwayne? No, <laughs> not yet. Not yet. Um, but then that one, and then, uh, the final one was, and I couldn't remember if we did this or not. I feel like we have the Goonies. I don't know if we've done the Goonies. We might have to look back. Yeah. Let's see. I, I can't, I can't, I can't definitively say if we've done the Goonies or not. Oh, okay. So what was the middle one? The shadow, the shadow the mummy or the Goonies. Goonies. Oof. You know, I think I've only seen The Shadow once. All right. The and shadow. it was when I ran a video store. So it was on VHS. Yes. I think we're going to do Baldwin's Shadow. Yeah, we are. All right. Now, yeah, coming up are. next week on that movie show, The Shadow, starring shadow. Alec. Is, okay. This is The Shadow Knows, right? That's, that, yes. that's this. Okay. Yep. Fucking. I'm in. I'm all I, in. So I've only seen the shadow once. It was a fever dream while I had my appendix out and I was in the hospital. Well, this should bring up some good memories for you. <laughs> yep. A pain in my side. Oh, all right. So coming up next week is the shadow starring Alec Baldwin. Uh, is it on? I'm guessing HBO Max, right? HBO Max. All right. If you want to play at home. Thank you for joining us on that movie show. Mike Went and Eddie McCabe. You can follow us on social media at Mike Went at the Eddie McCabe. And are you still doing the, the daily noontime show? Yeah. So um, my work schedule has kind of been all over the place. So I'm trying to go live Tuesday, Thursdays. Uh, okay. Last week was just one time. Okay. And then this week it's going to be live on set. I'm filming five minute improv classes Sweet. Uh, f- uh, all next week. So uh, I think it's just going to be kind of crude. It's going to be a lot faster. Uh, so just stay tuned because I'm probably just going to go live periodically and just kind of chat with people on the set. And when you go live, it will be to your Twitter page. So at yeah. Eddie McCabe on Twitter. Yep. Or uh, it'll also be, yeah, I guess I'm just going to do that because I'm not going to be near my computer. So it's probably just going to be on Twitter. Okay. And you can find all the links to everything at your Twitter page. Yeah. At Eddie McCabe yeah. on Twitter. And uh, so thanks for joining us. And we'll see you next week. Uh, we were going to talk about the Golden Globe nominations that came out, but I was looking at the calendar and the Golden Globes aren't for like three weeks. So we have plenty yeah. of time to, and they're not exciting. <laughs> no, they're not. <laughs> Which, you know, is probably good for this show. Because as yeah. Travolta said in the opening of Swordfish, Hollywood makes shit. Thanks for watching that movie show. <laughs> All right.